Welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, Guyana strengthening its step fighting capacity. Ministry of Education to raise awareness of sexual misconduct in schools. Sparandam and surrounding communities to benefit from 24-hour water supply system. And new automotive store launched. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. Do you know what the national budget is? The national budget is a public record of the government's financial plans. It identifies financial goals of the government and the amount of money needed to achieve those goals during a 12-month period. The national budget also tells the story of how the country's resources are being used and whether our decision makers are securing a good future for all citizens. It also reveals what the government sees as priority. As citizens, you may or may not agree with those priorities, but understanding what government's decisions and plans are for the year ahead will allow you to ask questions and hold the government accountable, as is your duty. The budget is everyone's business. Get involved now. A message from the Ministry of Finance. And now for the details. Guyana is strengthening its capacity to effectively combat trafficking in persons and, more importantly, assisting victims of such crimes. More in this Tiffany Rogers report. The government is collaborating with the International Organization for Migration to conduct workshops and consultations to develop standard operating procedures for victim-centered investigation, prosecution, identification and protection of victims of trafficking. The SOPs are critical if Guyana is to maintain its Tier 1 ranking on the U.S. State Department's Trafficking in Persons report, Minister Kemraj Ramjatan says. It is an important step in the implementation of the overall project and a key intervention which will help to guide local stakeholders in the execution of their duties and avoid gray areas as standard operating procedures always do regarding their respective roles and responsibilities. Social Protection Minister Amna Ali points out that the SOPs will be instrumental in the protection of children. The standard operating procedure will act as a guide for all stakeholders and relevant persons responsible for combating human trafficking in Guyana with an emphasis on child trafficking as well. It is also to improve their efficiency to protect victims of human trafficking within our country. The discussions and workshops will be spearheaded by international consultants Linda Baca and Lori Mann. First Lady Sandra Granger, an advocate for anti-tip, applauded the government for taking steps to protect its citizens against this crime. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. As the Ministry of Education investigates allegation of sexual misconduct by a teacher at a leading secondary school, Minister Nicolette Henry says there is need for more awareness on the issue. Sanika Thorne has the details. Today, the Chief Education Officer will brief the Minister of Education on the course of action to be taken in relation to the damning allegations. There are rules in place for misconduct, as it were, on the part of the teacher, and the Chief Education Officer um, would be briefing me later on in the day as to what course of action they will be taking um, against the individuals. Minister Nicolette Henry has committed to making public the findings of the investigations into the allegations, which was first reported by Cultural Policy Advisor at the Ministry, Ruel Johnson. The minister notes that the scandal has raised the need for awareness on sexual misconduct and harassment in schools. We will have to ensure that they are aware um, how to report, what to accept, what not to accept. This is part of education that should accompany mainstream and academic education. 
the ministry would be very interested in executing that. The minister is hopeful that the introduction of mobile psychosocial services next year will provide an outlet for reporting issues of such by students and address what she says is a gap in the education system. Sinka Thorne for InfoHub. The Ghana Diabetic Care Project is seeking to expand as the third stakeholder meeting is hosted. At the third stakeholder meeting of the Ghana Diabetic Care Project, updates of each component were presented. Minister within the Ministry of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummings, highlighted the successes of the project to date. Today, we should celebrate the successes of the, Guyanese, of the Guyana Diabetes Care Project. Since its inception, over 700 women have been screened and treated for gestational diabetes. Additionally, more than 2,000 persons have been screened for diabetic retinopathy. Minister Cummings remarked that the main aim of the project is to provide universal screening and treatment for diabetes that is equitable and accessible to persons living in Guyana. In order to significantly build on the gains made thus far through the diligent work being done by the project, we at the Ministry of Public Health recognize that more needs to be done with the collective and collaborative involvement of all concerned stakeholders. In closing, the minister said that the Ministry of Public Health is committed to leading a type 2 diabetes strategy, which will be national, multi-sectoral, community-based, patient-oriented, evidence-informed and cost-effective. Still ahead, CPCU to get much-needed upgrades and boxing to be introduced in Region 3 schools. Get the details after this. Do you know what the national budget is? The national budget is a public record of the government's financial plans. It identifies financial goals of the government and the amount of money needed to achieve those goals during a 12-month period. The national budget also tells the story of how the country's resources are being used and whether our decision makers are securing a good future for all citizens. It also reveals what the government sees as priority. As citizens, you may or may not agree with those priorities, but understanding what government's decisions and plans are for the year ahead will allow you to ask questions and hold the government accountable, as is your duty. The budget is everyone's business. Get involved now. A message from the Ministry of Finance. InfoHub continues with a report from Crystal Stull, who tells us that Ansem McCall Group of Companies launched its new automotive store today, where Business Minister Dominic Gaskin took time to reiterate government's commitment to providing affordable and energy-efficient vehicles. Minister Gaskin noted that government has taken measures over the years to ensure that new vehicles entering the country are in keeping with its green agenda. We expect to see more and more cars on our roads over the coming years. We would like those to be safer, more reliable, cleaner, greener, and more energy efficient. And this is why we have introduced measures to encourage the automotive industry and its consumers in this direction. With policy changes made over the years and with aims to reduce climate change, Minister Gaskin outlined some expectations for the future. I'm also hoping to see the introduction of hybrid and fully electric vehicles into the markets in the near future with the necessary charging facilities also coming on stream. Automobile owners can now maximize their driving pleasure from the new line of Suzuki motor vehicles. Sector head of Automotors Jerome Board and regional sales manager of Suzuki Board promised to deliver on behalf of the company quality services and accountability to Guyanese. The company will host an open house on Saturday for viewing and test driving of vehicles. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. Seneca Thorne now tells us that the government of Ghana and the People's Republic of China signed a memorandum of understanding that will see much needed upgrades to the Cyril Potter College of Education's STEM department. The Memorandum of Understanding provides a U.S. 250,000 grant to the Ministry of Education for the upgrade and expansion of CPC Science Laboratory and Information Technology Department. During the signing ceremony at the Ministry's breakdown office, Minister Nicolette Henry said that the donation will add to what the government has already undertaken to strengthen the capacity of the institution. Education is and will remain a major focus of this government. That being said, when we speak about teachers' training, we teach, we're speaking of it in the context of 
teaches preparation and teaches support. Permanent Secretary Vibert Welch noted that the intention is to enhance the knowledge content and skills of trainee teachers so they can deliver quality science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM subjects at both the secondary and primary school levels. Today this agreement is a demonstration of our intention to honoring the commitment Beyond the immediate benefits of this MOU to the student teachers of the college lies much anticipated impact of the nurturing of thousands of young minds in our schools, from among which Guyana will have its future scientists and engineers, technologists, technicians, and a host of other skills related to professionals. The project was birthed out of an engagement between President David Granger and the Chinese government. The implementation process will be monitored by the Chinese Embassy and the Ministry of Education. Seneca Thorn for InfoHub. Residents within the Sparring Dam and surrounding areas will, before year end, benefit from a 24-hour water supply service. GWI Managing Director Dr. Richard Van West Charles said the $40 million well is slated to boost the water service within the community. The Managing Director conducted a walkabout at the well site this morning. Clearly, uh, the, well, the existing well has been uh, dropping in production. So this well, actually, the production will be double that of the existing well. Um, so the residents should not have any problem whatsoever. Um, and I think this would be a good Christmas gift for the people of Sparendam and Pleasance. Executive Director of Operations Dwayne Shaco explained that Sparendam is not the only area set to benefit from improved water supply before year end. This area is served by two wells basically. Um, we have the Better Hope Water Treatment Plant and the Sparendam well basically. So what we're doing, we're, we're expanding the Better Hope Water Treatment Plant. We've activated another well at Better Hope, and we're, building, we're presently building a filtration system in Better Hope. The interventions at Better Hope will provide Pleasance, Ogle, Diamond, and sections of industry with improved service. The Sparring Down Well is one of three being executed for the water company by the Dutch firm De Reuter. The first is at Diamond, whilst Sophia is next in line. And finally, on InfoHub for Wednesday, the National Sports Commission is moving to introduce boxing to the physical education curriculum in Region 3 schools. More from Ernestine Leonard. Via a workshop which is being held at the Leonora Track and Field Center, physical education teachers from several schools in Region 3 will go through the basics of boxing. Deputy Director of Sport Brian Smith explained that the workshop will help teachers to deliver the sport once it's introduced into the curriculum. What we'd like to do is to see from this, uh, the students that you have under your purview, that they're taught the basics of boxing, which would be a requirement for the physical education syllabus at the Caribbean Secondary Examination Certificate, as well as to enable you to be able to be qualified at the basic level, to be able to conduct your own training sessions at your schools. The initiative is one that is welcomed by the physical education teachers. The schools participating include Leonora Secondary, Windsor Forest Secondary, Zeeburg Secondary and Crane Primary among others. I think it's a good idea to have such a program in the school system so that the children can channel their energies where they fight with each other into a meaningful area so that they will utilize it in terms of sports or competition and so on. I think it's a very, very good thing that we start this program at Region 3. I'm happy, I'm proud that the government, the sports organization is doing a wonderful thing for Region 3. The workshop will soon be expanded to Region 9, where the focus will be on cricket. Ernestine Leonard for InfoHub. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.